and velocities. Here we have forces, time, and velocities. Here we have velocities, accelerations, and times. What's missing here? What is kinematics as compared to kinetics? Oh, kinematics is motion without forces. So if we have no force mentioned, then we have kinematics. Uh, where each of these is, this is kinetics, kinematics, kinetics, etc. So what forces involved here? Velocity accelerations. No, what force is involved here? Uh, force is involved. There's no force listed in the problem. So this is a pure kinematics problem. There's no force listed. Whenever we have no force, this is just the hard kinematics problem without hard forces to go with it. We could say, well, what force do we have to apply to this to keep this going at a constant velocity? That would be a Newton's law problem with some kinematics to make the problem really hard. Uh, so kinematics, when you have a, a link and thing ends rotating, 
Uh, that's typically a kinematics problem. Don't make it any harder than it already is. It's hard enough as it is. Don't add other things to the mix. So the answer is A. A is the right answer. <laughs> All right, so how do we go about doing this? Well, before we get to the acceleration, we have to solve velocity, y. Well, what is a race of equation? We have that the acceleration of a is equal to the acceleration of b plus the acceleration of b with respect to a. That's our general equation for acceleration. And this relative acceleration has two components, a normal and a tangential component. What is the magnitude of the normal component? This is your r omega squared. And what direction is this? Opposite of R. So the opposite, it points backwards from the point back to R. And so the B with respect to A, sorry, this is wrong. This is A with respect to B. When you write this out, you start, if you multiply the denominators, it should work out. So a B times A over B gives you A. It's not mathematical, but it's going to be is a way to remember it. Uh, so this is, a, is acceleration of A with respect to B. So it points from A back to B. R goes from B to A. The acceleration goes from A back to B. This is assuming that B is fixed. How would A accelerate? So R omega squared opposite R. The tangential is R alpha in what direction? is perpendicular to your radius. So this is in the same direction as the velocity as we had before. And so since we have this omega squared term in it, we need to know velocity before we can solve for acceleration. So how can we solve for velocity? Infinity. 
instant. Therefore, what do we have? BB is equal to R from B to the instant center times omega AB. This is infinity, so this is, no. The infinity squared is really big. We need something that when we multiply by infinity, we can get a real number. One over infinity, which is zero. Which means at this instant, this link isn't rotated. Is it just translated? It's just translated. And that's because it's at the bottom, right? It's just because it's at the bottom. As soon as we go here, as soon as we're up on the thing, then the instant center would be here. Or if we were over here, the instant center would be up there. But at this instant, we are translating. <coughs> we can also solve it using the velocities, knowing that VA equals VB plus VA with respect to B. What do we know about VA at this instant? It's going to be horizontal. Is equal to VB, which is horizontal, plus VA with respect to B is going to, we have a length, so this is going to be five feet times omega AB. What direction is this going to be? down and to the right. And so how would we solve this? Our unknowns are VA and omega. And so in the y direction, we get what? Zero equals zero plus something. Five omega AB times what? Four fifths? Whatever, times something. And so then omega AB is also equal to zero. So we get the same answer whether we use instant centers or that, and so then this is zero, and so in the x direction we get the as equal to BB. So you get the same answer whether you use instant centers or you use relative velocities. So, so far so good. What? Yeah, VA, therefore, uh, <coughs> yeah. So we have VA equals VB equals what is it, six feet per second. And I guess it will be three over five. So three over five? Right. Thank you. Why am I not using anything? Why well, I should be using anything. I didn't bother doing it because it was zero. All right, so now we have our velocity. Uh, now, how do we get acceleration? We have acceleration of A equals the acceleration of B plus the acceleration of A with respect to B. What do we know about the acceleration of A? Horizontal. We're going around a circular path. Oh no, we have to go back all the way back to chapter 12. We have a normal and a tangential. Right? A normal and a tangential. What is the acceleration of A normal? It's going to be B squared, B A squared over R. And that's going to be going upwards we have a circular path, and so we always have a b squared over rho, which is r, uh, on rho, going upwards, and then we also have a tangential acceleration, which is a, a, and 
tangential. And that's going to be going in the direction of motion. Equal to the acceleration of B, which is 2 feet per second. Thank you. To the right. Plus what? The normal is going to be 0. And so it's, so it, it's, this is also going to have a normal and a tangential. Normal is r times 0 squared, plus the tangential is your r, your length, times your length times alpha, ab, and what direction is that going to be? So it's, going, it's going to be in the same direction as our velocity because the tangential means the same direction. So we're going to have an alpha. And so this is going to be down and let's see that. So it's going to be down like this. Three, four, five. It's perpendicular to this, and whenever you're perpendicular, the sides of the triangle are going to flip. Right, so that's three vertical, so this would be three horizontal if we're perpendicular. Wait, why is L zero squared? Because omega AD oh. is zero. Zero, what direction would it be? Towards. It's back up this way. So it's going to be going up at three, four. So that is zero just because this and this are parallel, and so we're not going to be rotating at this instant. So alpha AG is alpha. Alpha AB. Or AB, sorry. That's the alpha of the angular rotation of the around B. About whatever. Because okay. whenever something rotates, it takes everybody with it. So alpha is just alpha. We write it around B. Why do we write it around B? Because mentally, what we're saying here is we're going to hold B fixed and rotate what happens to A. But the alpha here is actually the same as the alpha here, is the same as around the instant center, is the same as. So alpha is just alpha because with a rigid body, if you rotate part of it, then uh, the rest is going to come. The, the position, move, the angle is going to be the same. If we hold it here or if we hold it here, the angle is going to be the same. The angle is 45 degrees, whether we rotate it about this or we rotate it like this. The motion, the physical motion of the endpoint changes. But the alpha, the angle it rotates is going to be the same as the alpha is going to be the same everywhere. So the mental convention, if we write it about point B, then this arrow is going to be pointing in the same direction as this arrow is pointing, roughly, in terms of which perpendicular thing. Okay, so where do we go from here? We have, we have the x and the y components. So x positive is to the right, what do we have? A and T equals two. two plus three fifths yes. L is five What do we get? A 
B A squared over rho. B A was six, so we have six feet per second squared over rho rho three feet B squared plus this is zero equals minus. Four zero fifths. zero four fifths. minus four fifths times five feet alpha a b. So therefore, alpha a b is. So, uh, why did we pick the x and y direction? Why was the x and y direction good choices? Yeah, one of our unknowns is in the x direction. If, if our unknowns were both at an angle, it might have been easier to choose along one of the angles. Uh, otherwise, we'd end up with two equations and two unknowns. But by choosing one of our directions to be perpendicular to an unknown, uh, 
uh, plus your impulse is equal to momentum two. This is for uh, what's going to happen. Where do we start? If you start merrily spinning along with I omega. Then what's going to happen? It's going to stop. Well, it's not going to stop. It's just going to come up. It's almost kind of like that stall. What? Oh, never mind. So it's, the inverse, it's basically the inverse problem. So we're sit, sitting at the bottom and then, right? So we're sitting at the bottom and then when it catches, what happens? It comes up. Why does it come back up? There's not a break, but there's the string is lack, lacking in there. Uh, so if we look at it as in terms of the system, where is the force applied on our system? Where is the force applied on the yo-yo? Right in the middle. Not in the middle. Just off the middle. Just off the middle. Right, so we have a diameter, and so we're going to have an impulse of force from the string. is equal to what's what's going on now after our impulse yeah, we have a linear velocity right so we're going to have a mass times velocity and we're also going to have So therefore, if this point is zero, then this is equal to what? How do we relate V2 and omega 2? So V2 is whatever, R omega 2. This point has zero velocity because of the string, and so your velocity in the center is equal to R omega 2. Do I not know? I'm just going to make up an R. M 
r squared over 2 times omega 1 equals m r squared over 2 plus m b2 is r omega 2, so it's r little r squared. All of that is going to be times omega 2. We basically get omega 2 over omega, or whatever. We get a relationship between omega 1 and omega 2. So that's the first part of the problem. Now we need to make this go up. Wait, oh, we don't small r. We don't know small r. We know big r. So we can plug in our favorite number. I didn't write down what my favorite number was. Zero so five point zero two five. So we've got so it's point zero two five. That's right. So little r. Zero point zero two five. That is, we have a five uh, millimeter diameter uh, shaft, uh, and big R is zero point. Three. Something went wrong. This is point zero three, so this has to be point zero zero two five. But it, it actually all cancels out. We could use, right? Because all of these we could do in either meters. It's all the M's is going to cancel out, and the R's are going to cancel out. So we could use R equals five and R equals thirty to get a relationship between omega one and omega two. So we basically can figure out that omega one is equal to. Uh, masses are going to cancel out. So it's basically r squared over 2 plus little r squared over r squared over 2 so omega 1 times omega 2 uh, which is equal to what? Okay, so that's the relationship between omega 1 and omega 2. That's the impulse momentum, and then how do we figure out how far up we need to go? That would be work energy. And so, what does that look like? It's spinning. So we, we're starting off with an omega and a V, and then what is that equal to? Right, we're basically at one meter. So this is the initial energy. So we start off with kinetic, what's our initial kinetic energy? One, half, m v squared plus one half i omega squared because we're both rotating and translating that's equal to what m g h so setting h is equal to zero so we're going uh one meter so what do we have mass is going to cancel so we're going to have one half mass uh, little r omega squared plus one half uh, one half m big r squared omega squared so this is your i disk that's equal to mass times g times Where do we go from there? Masses cancel out. And so we get that basically your omega is equal to GH over 
one half of r squared plus one fourth, plus one fourth r squared. And that is omega 2. Because this omega and velocity is the same as this omega and velocity. And so from there, did I solve for v? I solved for v instead of r. So does someone want to? Anyways, so once we know omega 2, then we can solve for omega 1. <coughs> Spring force necessary at this speed. You don't know. You don't know. Well, where is the spring attached? We don't have geometry, but oh, let's oh, like right before it catches. Right before it catches. Right? Well basically we have plastic and then we have metal, so we'll assume that they're metal. What's the acceleration of the metal? towards the center of gravity. So this is equal to what? What forces are acting on us? Well, whenever we have a fin, we can have an Rx and an Ry. What other S? What other? with the spring. All right, how do we figure out what the spring force needs to be? Some of the moments. What's the moment arm? It's whatever this is. Y. That makes sense? Complicated. It's beyond probably what you're doing on final. But conceptually, <laughs> it, it's the force 
or the equivalent, it's the equivalent force. If this was a force, it's a moment about this. So why is the moment arm of the force is acting like this? Okay. So that this is actually mass and acceleration, but it's going to cause a moment about your pin. Uh, the effect of the moment. First part's okay. Second part is uh, we saw the video of the stop saw. This is a really easy problem. What do we? What happened with the stop saw? First, we start off spinning. With omega plus, what happens? The break comes in. So we're going to have some F and some N. That equals. <laughs> now we're going to have MB and I omega. Do we have a velocity? No, the, the first one is just spinning merrily, cutting wood. And then the brake engages, and then uh, we have three feet. No, no and then basically, what we're rotating is around point P or brake. So, again, this is quite similar to the yo yo problem, except it's just rotated. And so, you basically get uh, uh, about point P, angular momentum is conserved. So we basically have I omega equals I omega 2 plus MB2 times R. Uh, reasonable assumptions. Uh, what do we have? A uh, saw rotates at 360 or 36,000 RPM. We need to convert that to radians per second, so we multiply by pi over 60, that ends up with 94.25 radians per second, that's omega. Uh, and then our diameter is, what, 10 inch saw blade, table saw blade. Uh, this, how would we model our saw? Uh, how would we find I for the saw? So this, so I equals one half m r squared. So what we end up with is one half m r squared omega equals one half m r squared omega two. Well, let's make omega two. What are we concerned about? How fast we're going to shoot out of there? Right. So let's say that v two over R plus M V to R. So masses cancel. This R cancels with this R. This R cancels with that R. Mass was canceled. So we basically get V2 equals. One half R omega over one half plus one. Plugging in numbers, uh, so this is what three halves over. So it's R is five inches times omega is nine four point two five radians per second, and then we end up that's over three half over three halves, and this is. 
157 inches per second. So for a five inch saw, the time it takes, if assuming constant velocity is five inches over 157 inches per second, 0 0.03 seconds. Uh, is that how fast it takes to descend? That's assuming that the supporting housing is not giving it any resistance when it actually is. That's why this is the 